Coming up today on the Wayne Train in episode 10, it's our last one of the first season of this save and we do need just one more win to make sure we do gain automatic promotion up to the Premier League and then also hopefully we can secure the championship in the process in amongst our last four games and hopefully as well the Wayne Train can secure the golden boot in the championship to round things off for the first season. Episode number 10 of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Argyle. I hope you're doing well and coming today. We are going to wrap up the first season of this save we're going to get for our last four games of the season. Hopefully we can get just that one more win that we need to secure our automatic promotion up to the Premier League. And then off the back of that, try and hold on to our six point advantage over Leeds United so we can lift the championship trophy as well. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you haven't done so or really are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated we've only gone forward a few days off the back of where we left things at the end of yesterday's episode where unfortunately Ipswich Town picked up a win over Watford so it did keep their slim hopes of overcoming us for an automatic promotion spot alive if you missed that episode I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner we've only gone for a little bit off the back of that we're going to play the first of our last four games in the championship season on paper looks like it might be one of the toughest or be at Leicester City actually not doing as well as you'd expect in the safe all the way down in 10th they did hold us to a draw at the King Power earlier this season this time we play them at home and they are without a manager for this one as well. So it could actually be a bit more of a winnable fixture than it does. Look, our toughest of our last four fixtures is actually against Hall City, who are rising up the table currently. The only one of our opposition who are inside of a playoff spot. But hopefully we can get the job done here and make our way up to the Premier League with a couple of games in hand. Also worth noting our injuries at the moment, not quite as bad as they were during the course of yesterday's episode, still missing Mike Cooper in goal and Kane Kessler Hayden with sprained ankle ligaments at right back for a little bit, but they might be back by the end of the season. It does mean that Ryan Fredericks can make his way onto the bench for this first game of today's episode. So thankfully, a little bit stronger than we were during the course of those games yesterday. And hopefully we can get the job done here on a Friday night. It does mean that we can't keep an eye on the results from those Leeds United and Ipswich Town games, the main thing here for the first one today, if we pick up a win, that is automatic promotion guaranteed up to the Premier League to be fair. I think even a draw might be enough considering the points gap that we do have on Ipswich Town. However, still a little bit of rotation for this first game just because of match load for some of our players. Obviously, Hazard and go with that injury to Mike Cooper. Also, Halsner at right back, Almami Toure, very injury prone and Fredericks only recommended for 45 minutes coming back from that injury so Halsner is our right back option for this one Dan Scar will start at centre back with Lewis Gibson also being injury prone and the same does apply with Luke Kundal over Finn Azaz in the camera it also means that our bench looks a little bit different for some of those attacking midfield areas Paveda can be our cam cover for this game but hopefully in front of our home park faithful this is the game where we can secure our passage up to the Premier League for next season so far only lost three games in this championship season picked up at quite a few draws but it has meant we haven't lost too much and that is why we are on top of the championship table there are Leicester still a very strong team that should be doing a lot better than they currently are to be fair they did lose Kalecci here in that show in the January transfer window he did leave for West Ham but still with the likes of Jamie Vardy, Jewsbury Hall and some other pretty good players in that team you'd expect them to be doing a lot better than 10th on the table not even sure they can actually make their way into the playoff picture this season and we get an early highlight here in our favour hopefully can get on the front foot nice and early Callum Wright plays that one back to Mumba tries to play a pass there doesn't quite do it but actually puts in a good slide tackle there and we end up with possession off the back of that albeit we give it away trying to get back on the attack an early chance here for Jamie Vardy does beat Julio there to the ball good one-on-one -on -one chance there with Connor Hazard but thankfully he just tries to put that one past him at the near post instead of the far post and Connor Hazard comes up with a good save but already early warning signs there from a Leicester City team who now without a manager might be a bit fired up and then Jamie Vardy gets his head on the end of that corner but thankfully Hazard again comes up with a good save they try and put that one into the mixer and Jamie Vardy again an interesting option that time went far post 
really should have tried to knob that one straight down. That would have been a certain goal that puts it right onto the path of Connor Hazard. So Leicester City there with three good chances from their opening highlight, but thankfully they take none of them. It's still nil all, but they are back on the attack again here. And as Mabadidi, who does get in behind good work there from Hells, and thankfully didn't give away a penalty. And we do clear our lines, albeit Leicester back in position, albeit good work that time from Morgan Whitaker. And hopefully we can get back on the attack there. Connor Cody heads that one clear, but thankfully straight into the path of one of our players now, Sebastian Hausner. Starts to make his way forward. It looks like he is going to fizz one into the mixer. And the Wayne train gets on the end of that one. Gets some help from the inside of the post. But off the back of a good start by Leicester. We go down the other end and score. With our only chance we've seen so far in this game. The Wayne train. He goes up to 26 goals this season. That should be enough for him now. To pick up the golden boot. In this first season of the save. In the championship. It's a good ball there from Halsner. Who's actually done a pretty good job at right back when we have needed him to, since we have signed him in the January transfer window. With our first chance of the game, we put it away and do take a 1-0 lead just shy of the halfway point in the first half. And hopefully now we can hold on to this lead to make sure we can make our way up to the Premier League with a couple of games in hand. Leicester there, they try and play a ball forward down the left-hand side, but thankfully it's a poor one and we can get back on the front foot. Now Morgan Whitaker, big chance there. Could have actually squared that one. Or the Wayne train, maybe you should have, it was a decent attempt, but unfortunately comes off the post, still 1-0, but it feels like now we might be getting on the front foot and there a poor pass from Leicester, unfortunately we can't quite keep it, but we are 1-0 up, and again there we win the ball back, that time through Morgan Whitaker, now Halton plays that one for Whitaker, starts to make his way forward, takes on a shot from outside the box, and Morgan Whitaker who's also up there on the championship golden boot table, he puts that one away, from well outside the box, it must be a nice dipping, curving shot, that one, into the bottom left corner, that makes it 2-0, it's a quick fire double, and hopefully those goals will be enough to see us go up to the Premier League for next season, which to be fair, we could be doing anyway with our current points total, if Ipswich Town do slip up one more time but at the moment, it is well and truly in our hands, two shots on target, for two goals to our two star men here this season, attacking-wise, in Ben Wayne, and Morgan Whitaker, and with only a few minutes left in the first half, it is a nice comfortable lead, and we might add to it here, before half time with a front down that far side, Wayne plays that one into Cullen Wright, Morgan Whitaker with a header, he scored a couple of those in the last couple of episodes, but that time puts that one just over the bar, but off the back of that rough start, now well and truly the team who are on the front foot, and we'll go into half time with a 2-0 lead, as I said, very if he start there, Jamie Vardy had some really good chances, to give Leicester City a lead, but thankfully Connor Hazard came up with a couple of good saves, also some interesting options there by the English journeyman striker, and off the back of that with our first attack, Ben Wayne scored a goal, and then Morgan Whitaker, not too long after, just checking on player fitness, and at the moment everyone's doing a decent job, we'll just adjust some opposition instructions already, they're taking off Jamie Vardy, which is interesting, but Harry Suter and Patson Dacker, they will make their way on off the bench, so definitely some decent replacements there, for that Leicester City team, they've got some good squad depth, which is why it's quite surprising to see them struggling so much down in the championship compared to how they're doing in real life, where they're absolutely cakewalking the championship, albeit still early days, but early on in the second half, we're back underway with that 2-0 lead, and with a throw yet again down our left-hand side, Helton on the ball, cuts inside a little bit, he picks out Kundal, but it goes all the way back to Julio, one more goal here, and I think the party can get underway at home park, and Morgan Whitaker will get in behind that one, now I thought it took a touch there off Hermanson and goal, but it actually took none, comes off the post and goes out for a goal kick, so no save there, unfortunately Morgan Whitaker can't quite hit the target, he's now had a couple of chances to add to his tally, but still up by two goals tonight, it does feel like the momentum well and truly in our favour, and just before this next highlight does start, both our wingbacks are down to red hearts, so we'll make some substitutions, Ryan Fredericks coming back from injury can come on at right back, and Brendan Galloway for this one is our left back cover, just because I felt like that was a good idea to make sure we had some centre back cover who could also cover that left hand side, that's what Galloway will do when he comes on shortly, but there is a highlight, and we get the ball forward to Kundal, now Cullum right, nice ball in there for Luke Kundal, who might have options, makes his way forward, goes down, unfortunately definitely not a penalty, but Mumba, he wins that ball, somehow that tackle's not a foul, we hit that one over the bar from Hausner, Bought that tackle there on Bundu, might have resulted in a penalty, but apparently not enough the back of that, now it is Luke Kundal who is down to Red Heart, and Pervader can come on for him and out the R mark, that does mean we are still up 
by two goals nil. Interesting to see that Galloway has already picked up a yellow card. Hopefully that doesn't prove too costly. We'll just make sure he eases off tackles. We do still have Mikel Miller who could come off the bench and do something for us at left back. But ideally we would not do that. That would be a bit of a wasted substitution. Shortly off the back of that though, Leicester City are on the attack. Patson Ducker tries to put that one into the mixer. Thankfully it comes off the post and it is still 2-0. Shortly off the back of that, they have a chance here from a corner. We'll try and praise our guys. Unfortunately, doesn't stop the highlight. Corner there for Leicester City. Thankfully, Galloway at the near post will head that one away. Might be quite good defensively in this one now with two usual centre-backs playing on the wings. But off the back of that, we eventually do deal with the danger. Cullen right now is in possession, albeit poor pass there. And Leicester City try and loop that one over the top. And Julio will deal with that danger. Now, Galloway plays that one over to Dan Scar, tries to get a man in there, which was interesting. A little bit iffy at the back, but thankfully we eventually make our way forward through Fredericks, albeit poor pass, but in the end, that highlight not up to much. And we are still 2 0 up with 35 minutes left. And now it's time for us, I think, to make our last couple of substitutions. Adam Randall is down to a red heart. Matt Butcher will come on for him. And also, with this last substitution, we've got a couple of options of players that we could take off, albeit both centre-backs on average ratings, no cover on the bench, so Mustafa Bundu will come on for Cullum right here, that'll be our last sub, it must have been earlier, we took off Mumba, not Bundu, do get those two mixed up quite often in the save, being our options down that left-hand side, but yet again, we'll just adjust these opposition instructions and make sure that now, with all our subs used, we can hold on to this lead, with just over 20 minutes left, and shortly off the back of that, we do have a free kick here, we play it forward to Pervade and our Butcher, Plays that one back to Julio. Goes back to Butcher at the moment. Just consolidating position. Halton picks out Butcher and we eventually start to make our way for Whitaker. Starts to go forward. He's in a bit of tight space there but eventually finds a bit of room. But unfortunately can't quite pick out Pervader but does well there to win that ball back with a header. And now Ryan Fredericks is on the ball. Picks out Whitaker. It somehow finds its way in to Ian Pervader. And he finally scores his first goal here at Plymouth Argyle. Does the former Leeds United man and that goal could go a long way towards us beating those guys for the championship title and also that should steal our spot in the Premier League for next season. Did feel like there that Doyle did bring down Whitaker. Could have been a penalty, but thankfully the referee did let play go on and Ian Pervader picks up his first goal in a Plymouth Argyle shirt. 3-0 and that should be all she wrote. You can kind of see now why Leicester City have been struggling down in 10th on the championship table. I think this result will make sure there's no chance they can make their way into the playoff picture. So the new manager will have a fair bit to do in there. The Wayne train with a shot from well outside the box. That one goes in yet again with some help off of the post. His 27th for the season, as I said earlier, that should make sure he's the golden boot winner for the championship. Might also put him in the mix for some awards in the championship for this season. Might even be player of the season here at Plymouth Argo, but that was from a similar range, in fact, even further, as that first goal that Morgan Willica did score of his in the first half, that one gets some help from the inside of the post, and just makes its way over the line, we are going up to the Premier League, we'll be interested to see how much transfer budget that we do have, but we've eventually done it, took a little bit longer than I was hoping, I was hoping it would happen during the course of yesterday's episode, but unfortunately, we bottled that 2 0 lead against Bristol City. But today, we are going to get the job done in the first game off the back of this. Hopefully, can hold on to that advantage over Leeds United and pick up the championship trophy in the process. Unfortunately, we go looking for a fifth goal. Don't quite link up down that far side. Now, Harry Winks plays that one forward to Mother Diddy. Pats and Ducker does get in behind and puts that one away in the bottom right corner, albeit he did look offside. And indeed, that was the case. That one won't count. Still 4 0 as we do head in to six minutes of added time. But that will be all she wrote. Paxton Ducker does not get a goal. We win 4 0, and the party starts here at Home Park. That is automatic promotion up to the Premier League. You can see, as I said, why Leicester City are struggling so much this season. In the end, didn't do too much off the back of those good early chances. They did get through Jamie Vardy, just not quite as clinical as you'd expect him to be in those first couple of minutes. They definitely should have had a 1-0 lead, but to be fair off the back of that, we really did hit our gear, pick up a 4-0 win, and as you can see, that does mean that we do get promoted up to the Premier League. Off the back of that, we'll go forward quickly and see how much our transfer budget is here at Plymouth Argyle for next season, because I think that should come for off the back of us gaining that automatic promotion. I don't think it will matter too much if we win the championship or we don't. 
just making our way up there and you can see those initial budgets. It's 33 million, which is actually a pretty good budget. Of course, this year we had none, but we did play in real world mode and we got a bit of a top up of around about 4 million going in to the January transfer window. Also that wage budget does look quite decent. That's going up to 525,000 pounds a week. So that should be enough money for us to do a bit of damage in the off season transfer window. And to be fair, we're gonna to need to, because we are one of the weakest teams on paper in the championship. I dare say we'll be near odds on to come back down to the championship if we don't improve enough, but we've got a decent transfer budget to work with off the back of picking up that 4-0 win over Leicester to secure our place in the Premier League for next season. So thankfully we get the job done there in our first game of today's episode, getting that automatic promotion up to the Premier League. And as you can see, our gap over Ipswich Town is still at 10 points. They off the back of that, they actually lost to Millsborough. So even if we didn't pick up a win over Leicester City, we still would have made our way up to the Premier League on that weekend, albeit now the eye is on Leeds United, the team who are challenging us for the championship title. They did beat Blackburn 2-0 at home. And on the following match day, one week later, unfortunately... We didn't pick up too good a result away from home against Stoke. Only nil all off the back of Stoke City getting a red card in the first half. To be fair, lots of our players were still quite tight off the back of playing them in that promotion clincher against Leicester City. So because of that, we did put out a pretty rotated team for this one. But even still, with a one-man advantage for most of the game and bringing on some big guns off of the bench, unfortunately, still not enough. So it was a couple of drop points there. So it does mean that Leeds United did get the chance to close the gap on us on that match day. And they did do it, as you can see, right down the bottom, a 3-1 win over Millsborough. So it does mean with two games left in the championship season, they're only four points behind us. But next up, we do take on a Millwall team who are also under new management, quite a similar situation to Leicester City. These guys now being managed by the former Rangers manager and Giovanni von Blankhorst. Hopefully we can pick up a decent result here against the team right down the bottom of the table is our easiest game in the run home during today's episode. Otherwise, if we don't pick up a win here in Leeds United do, that will mean it goes down to the final day where we take on a Hall City team who are getting right up that table, actually not too far behind Ipswich Town at this point, and they take those guys on in their next match at home. So that will be interesting if we don't pick up a win here, but hopefully we can get the job done and that will make sure that we lift the championship title with a game in hand and go up to the Premier League as champions. Quite a similar situation to what Plymouth did in real life from League One last season. Also in terms of our squad going to this one, everyone back from injury. So Mike Cooper and Kane Kesler Hayden are available, albeit Kesler Hayden is only recommended for 45 minutes. So we won't be starting, but it does mean we've got some good impact off of the bench if we do need it at some stage. But with all those players coming back from injury, it does mean we're pretty close to full strength for the second game that we're going to show you guys in today's episode. Just Frederick staying at right back with those limited minutes recommended for Kane Kesler Hayden, but otherwise Mike Cooper's back, also Finn Azar's in the central attacking midfield, so that is good, and hopefully we can pick up a comfortable win like you would expect against the Millwall team who are struggling, albeit new manager bounce. That could be something that does just nullify that a little bit, and to be fair, sometimes teams can just stutter their way to picking up trophies in football manager. It's happened in a couple of my recent saves that I have done, albeit those were back on FM23, but there are Millwall. They are also going with a 4-2-3-1. And here we are to be fear the strongest team we've put out for a little while with those injuries in mind. Ryan Fredericks, he will get a start here. Hopefully can do a decent job off the back of what he's done so far since coming to the club. Was playing quite well before he suffered an injury going in to yesterday's episode. But thankfully he is back. And so is Kane Kesler Hayden, who might be a player that we do look to sign in the off-season, because of course he's got a nice link up down that right-hand side with Morgan Whitaker, is leading our assists here at Plymouth Argyle this season. Might be a good idea to keep that link intact going into the Premier League and maybe look to strengthen in some other areas. Of course, we've got quite a few low knees here at Plymouth Argyle, in particular, both our central attacking midfielders, Azaz and Kundal. They're both on loan, so I definitely think we need to sign one of those going in to next season. And also our backup deep-line playmaker in behind Helton and Lewis Warrington is also on loan, so that's another area we will definitely need to look to sign someone. But to be fair, so far this game has been very quiet. Only 10 minutes left in the first half so far. We've only got two shots off, none on target. Mill actually looking like a team who are more threatening. As Leeds United, they take a 2-0 lead over QPR. You'd expect them to be doing that, though. But first highlight is a corner in our favour. Morgan Whitaker will take it, try and put this one near post. Unfortunately, 
can't quite link up with anyone. It's a little bit there of ping pong inside the box, but Callum Wright takes on a shot from a tight angle, but to be fair, it was quite difficult to score from, and it does go over the bar, and that looks like it's the only highlight of the first half. A couple of players out there are on average ratings, including the Wayne train, but I think for now, we'll leave things the way they are. We'll just adjust here. Some opposition instructions yet again, but that was a pretty average first half. Hopefully, we can keep up our record. I say our record of scoring every championship game this season. Of course, that actually got broken in that last game, that nil all draw against Stoke City. So unfortunately, don't quite go the whole season scoring a goal in every game. But now 10 minutes into the second half, and we are still not doing really anything in this one. Might be time for us to make some substitutions. Ben Wayne on a 6.4. We know what he's done this season. We'll give him a rest. Ryan Hardy can come on for him. And also Jordan Helton. Only on a 6.5, Lewis Warrington can come on for him. Might be his last appearance in a Plymouth Argyle shirt for the low knee. Yet again, checking on those opposition instructions, but at the moment, they do look quite good. And also, we might just chuck Mumba at left back on to support. That can sometimes help us get a bit more going on on attack. Now, Finazaz there does get cut down by Cooper, but he did win the ball, so no penalty. And Millwall here will get a chance in front of the den to play out from the back. But Morgan Whitaker that time with a good tackle, and we win the ball back. Inside the middle half now. Cullum Wright squeezed that one nicely for Ryan Hardy. We just took off the Wayne train. And Ryan Hardy will poke that one home as night for the season. So it's quite good to see he can still score goals. when we do need to give the Wayne train a rest. Or he isn't performing too well in a situation like this. And he scores a goal which will hopefully make sure that we do pick up the championship title. With one game in hand hopefully. We can also see the trophy lift if we can hold on to this 1-0 lead. But thankfully we do score that goal because otherwise... That would have made things quite interesting going in to that final day of the season. A little bit nervy, albeit to be fair, we've already done the main job this season. Off the back of that hot start that we did have this season, which did make us reevaluate our goals in this save quite considerably. And thankfully, we have stayed near the top of the championship ever since then. We take a 1 0 lead off the back of that prior Leicester game, which did see us seal our promotion up to the Premier League. Hopefully, now we can also go up there as the champions of the championship. But yet again, we are on the attack. Randall makes his way inside the box. Now, Fredericks will square that one. But Cullen Wright, he takes on a shot, but it does get blocked by a Millwall defender. We'll just see if this highlight has any more juice in it. But Mumba plays that one a bit too deep there for Cullen Wright. It goes out for a throw. And so the main highlight there was that block shot off of Cullen Wright, albeit now we get shown the throw off the back of that. So off the back of putting Mumba on to support a bit more happening in this game. Tries to curb that one top right corner. We we'll scored a couple of goals like that this season, but unfortunately that one just off target. And a couple of players off the back of that are down to Red Hearts, both our wingers. So this time Perveda and Bundu can come on for those two. And also Fredericks is just a little bit uninterested at the moment. Off the back of our recent feedback, we'll give Kane Kessler Hayden some game time coming back from injury. So hopefully he can last a bit more potentially in our last game of the season. Albeit might not need to show you guys that one against Paul City. Albeit that could actually be quite an important game for seedings going in to the playoffs. We're still holding on here to a 1-0 lead to be fair what it's been. A quite even game here at the den, but 1-0 making our way now into the last 10 minutes of this one. We'll see if there's any more highlights or a chance for us to potentially just make sure we hold on to all three points and grab a second goal. But at the moment, Millwall not doing a heck of a lot. We've somehow got a big chance there, which we miss. Our XG got bumped up quite considerably. But I think it's time for us to lift the championship trophy off the back of a 1-0 win over Millwall. We don't see it. Maybe that will happen off the back of our last game at home against Hull City. Hopefully, we can also win that one. We'll show you guys the trophy lift if it does happen. But it was a bit of a scratchy result, that one. But thankfully, we do get the job done. Only two shots on target. Thankfully, that Ryan Hardy one did beat their goalkeeper. And we get away there with a 1-0 win in front of the den. We'll just go forward and make sure that it does pop up there. We can tell the guys to enjoy the celebration. So indeed, my maths is correct. We are now the champions of the championships of back-to-back -back titles for Plymouth Argyle in this universe, and they go up to the Premier League as the championship winners. We'll come back shortly and hopefully show you guys a trophy lift before doing the end of season review. And we have made our way forward now to the end of season review, and we did play that game against Hull City. As you can see, we actually got a guard of honour heading into this game in front of our home fans. You'll see shortly Mike Cooper, the captain for this match day, absolutely loved it shortly. Not too sure why I'm part of it, talking to the referee. That does look just a little bit suspect. But that is all I need to recall from that game, because despite the fact that one was at home and we got no trophy lift the week prior, still no trophy lift there 
on their final day of the season, so that was a little bit disappointing, but thankfully actually came back from one goal down in this game to pick up a 2-1 win, late goals to Ryan Hardy and also to Luke Kundal, both those players coming off the bench for slightly disappointing Ben Wayne as well as Ben Azaz, but we pick up a 2-1 win and it does mean we actually set a club record four points scored in the season. We win the championship with 103 points and there's a spoiler for the playoffs, but in the end, we finished four points clear of Leeds United and Ipswich Town. They did end up finishing third, Hall City down in fourth, Southampton and Middlesbrough for the other teams that were in the playoffs. As you can see, it was actually Ipswich Town who did win that playoff final over Hall City and then by a quite convincing scoreline 4-1, albeit that was off the back of extra time in terms of the semi-finals, Ipswich Town bet Millsborough after extra time 2-1 in that second leg and in the other semi-final, Hull City got the job done fairly comfortably for free over at Southampton. So all the top seeds did make their way through to that playoff final, but Ipswich Town, who to be fair, were in third for most of the season up until that second to last match day before we bet Hull City and they did jump back up to third. So I think that's deserved. Of course, they were the team who were kind of in that title fight for a fair while this season, but in the end, it did develop into one between just us and Leeds United. You know, and thankfully, we did get the job done and we'll go up to the Premier League for the second season of this save as the championship winners and with a decent transfer budget of 33.5 million and a spare wage budget as well of 285,000. That is definitely something that we can work with. Also, quite a few players who are coming in. Reese Williams, Raphael Mamas, who did those deals earlier, but also a couple of youngsters that we have signed who are being released by some Premier League clubs. Yusuf Akhamlich, he is a Moroccan striker come winger. He will join us from Tottenham going to the start of next season. Also, the most promising one, Osman Kamara out of Arsenal. He has a lot of potential, so really excited to see what he might do in a couple of years' time. And the other player that we signed on a free, also from Arsenal, was Louis Brown, a centre-back come left-back. So a couple of youngsters who will join us going to the start of next season. But it is time for the season review for our first one here at Plymouth Argyle. And of the Wayne train, obviously, we did pick up the championship, which was definitely unexpected, but we'll take it. Does mean we get up to the Premier League a little bit sooner than I was expecting, albeit that might be a bit more of an issue than a blessing because it does mean we might be in for a rude awakening next season. But our signing of the season, to be fair, we did do real world mode and disable the first transfer window. So we didn't do too many signings. But signing of the season did go to Morgan Whitaker coming from Swansea for £1 million, 40 appearances and 8 off the bench, 21 goals and 9 assists, the highest average rating. Can't complain with that. But also both Kane Kesler Hayden and Finn Azar's on loan from Aston Villa did a brilliant job, I think. At the very least, Kane Kesler Hayden is a player we do need to look to sign going into the start of next season with that good partnership, as I said earlier, with Morgan Whitaker. Also, our best signing that we made, according to the ratings, was Ryan Fredericks from Bournemouth for 225k. Also, we did the deal for Sebastian Hausner coming in from IFK Göteborg. And also going down a bit further, we did sign Ian Papeda from Leeds United as well. So we didn't do too much business in the January window, but the business that we did do was rated quite highly, but fair enough that Morgan Whitaker does get signing of the season. Transfers out, we only sold one player, and that was McCauley Gillespie to Derby County for £300,000. And coming back from loan next season, we have Will Jenkin Davies, albeit he might be a player who does go on the transfer list because he doesn't look too promising. But also Freddy Osaka, a fairly promising winger. We'll see if he hangs around the club. For next season, this season's results, obviously the championship was absolutely brilliant. Only lost three games. Two of those were quite close back to back, back around October and November against the two teams who at one point were challenging us for that championship title in Ipswich Town and Leeds United, but thankfully got better results against those guys in the second half of the season. Back at home, we did draw 13 games, which was a lot more than Leeds United, but that did mean we only lost three while they lost nine. That was the big difference maker. So despite the fact they won one more game than us, we do lift the championship title by four points. The other team that we did lose to was Blackburn Rovers back in March, but that was with a pretty heavily rotated team. And at that stage, we do have a pretty big gap on top of the championship, so it did feel like a risk that we could take out. Only disappointment this season was the FA Cup getting knocked out in our first game in the third round by Bradford City down in League 2. So that was disappointing, the final of that still to be played between Chelsea and Brentford. And speaking of Chelsea, that was probably our biggest win this season. We knocked those guys off in the second round of the Carabao Cup before unfortunately losing to at that stage top of the table Middlesbrough 
in the third round away from home, but we did a decent job in that Carabao Cup, and to be fair, the board had no real expectations of us in that competition, so it didn't matter too much that we didn't play too much in either of those competitions, that actually probably helped us to switch our focus mainly to the championship and to win that title in the end. The moments to remember for this season, our biggest win was in our first game this season, 5-0 over Huddersfield at home park. That's also the game where the goal of the season got scored from Adam Randall. We'll check on that shortly. The match to remember, apparently, that first round 4-0 win in the Carabao Cup over Coventry, I'd argue the 2-1 win over Chelsea had a bit more to it, but goal of the season was in that Huddersfield game from Adam Randall. And it did come from a corner around the hour mark at this stage. We we're only up by two goals nil. Gibson plays this one back to Randall, and it's a wonderful curved effort into that top right corner to help us on our way to a 5 0 win. So Adam Randall there with the goal of the season against Huddersfield. Going forward to the finances, our reputation goes up slightly. Hopefully, it will go up a little bit further when we do make our way into the Premier League. But at the moment, only three stars, which to be fair is a little bit of a rise. All the revenue, obviously, not registered for the season before we started the save. So that all looks quite good but to be fair competition price at the moment that should be quite good and of course we are going to be getting a nice payment for our tv money from the premier league and total merchandise sales 681,000. apparently though only 202 shirts sold but to be fair ben wayne on the top of that list being our top goal scorer and he might be up for player of the season as well going forward to our best level for the season this should make pretty easy sense because we did play this lineup for most of the season, Mike Cooper in goal, Kesler Hayden and Mumba at wingback. We've got Gibson alongside Pleguazello at centre back, Horton and Randall in the defensive midfield. Our front three attacking wise were right Azaz and Whitaker, and obviously Ben Wayne was the main striker. 27 goals from 32 starts. He did miss quite a bit of football this season actually, with Oceani qualifying also. Got a flu around December and also a suspension off the back of that. So did miss quite a bit of football in around that time, but still got the most goals. Just a couple more than Morgan Whitaker, who did actually get nine assists. So just had a couple fewer goal contributions than the Wayne train. But going forward to the awards here at Plymouth Argyle this season, we picked up Manager of the Month for the Championship in December. That's the only month we actually got that for. But the club awards and Ben Wayne picks up not just the Player of the Season, but also Young Player of the Season. So the Wayne train does kind of clean up there. At the Club Awards Sign of the Season, you saw earlier as well as Goal of the Season, top goal scorer of the Wayne Train with 27, most assists, Kesler Hayden with 20. That's the reason I think we'll try and get him back here next season, maybe on a permanent deal. Most player of the matches that went to Cullen Wright, and the highest average rating was the Wayne Train. As you did see before competition awards, we get to get those. We might update you guys on those come the start of next week in the record breakers. Kesler Hayden got the most assists by a player in a season. Cooper the most clean sheets with eight, and as well as that, it was Callum Wright with the most man of the matches. Worst discipline, Adam Randall with 10 yellow cards, and the highest transfer fee paid was that 1 million that was pre-arranged for Morgan Whitaker. Thankfully, that did happen, because he was one of the better players here at Plymouth Argyle this season, and I dare say that fee record will get broken in our transfer window heading into the Premier League next season, because we're definitely going to need to spend a bit of money to improve the squad to a Premier League standard. There you can see that brief little blurb there about how we looked at class above when we got going during the middle of the year. No one would have expected us to get that outcome, me included, but the Wayne train helped us on our way, and we are up in the Premier League next season. And here is the dynamic manager timeline. Here you can see what we did do this season. Not too much on there at the moment, obviously, with just this being our first year of the save, but to be fair, some of this stuff does look a bit more useful than it was last year in games, hopefully, that will be a bit more useful, this dynamic manager timeline, than it was last year. Also, of course, worth noting that back in February, we did lose Joe Edwards to retirement as well. That was missing earlier from the signings and sales page, because obviously that was not a choice. But that was the main reason that we did actually bring Ryan Fredrickson in and around transfer deadline day. And I think that will wrap things up here for this first season of the Wayne train. Went a lot better than expected. Ben Wayne picks up the golden boot, the player of the season, and the young player of the season here at Plymouth Argyle also hopefully will pick up some competition awards as well, and hopefully can continue that form when we do get stuck in to the Premier League next season, and we'll come back, hopefully at the start of the week, play our first game in the top flight, and also wrap up the transfers that we are going to do. Obviously, there might be quite a few, because according to our squad report that did just come through before that end of season review, we are by far the weakest team in the Premier League we might be in for a tough time next season. But if you enjoyed that first season of The Wayne Train, then do remember 
to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well because no doubt our life in the Premier League will be a lot tougher at least you'd imagine so otherwise the Skagen Press is certainly a little bit OP but we'll come back at the start of next week wrap up the transfers and also hopefully play our first game in the Premier League in that first episode on Monday so until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers <laughs>